Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. It is a very warm and sunny day here in Portland, Oregon. I think it was like 79 for the high today and uh, very sunny. I spent a lot of my morning planting out annual veggie starts and getting fairly sunburned. And after that, I went in and got my sun hat and wisened up a little bit. I find the first really warm sunny day of the year, I'm a little bit unprepared for and then I get back in my routine of like, oh, I need to take care of myself and I need to have sunscreen and I need to have a hat on. So since I was planting veggies out today, I thought I would address a subject that has come up quite a bit in a number of permaculture groups. It's a position that folks take rather vigorously and I think needs to be addressed. It is the position that you can't grow annual veggies in permaculture. that you definitely can't have annual veggie beds and that you have to stick to food forest design. That is not true at all. And I think some of the folks who um, put forth that kind of dogmatic notion of permaculture are maybe new to it. Maybe they've just started diving into food forest design and they're really excited about it. And they are latching onto that latching onto the really cool elements of food foresting. Maybe they've watched my videos. Maybe they've read um, some of the books on forest garden design. And they are making the incorrect assumption that that is all there is to permaculture. So I will say, let's be gentle with folks who are putting forth that assertion. I think sometimes they're new to permaculture. They have an earnest desire to want to design sustainably, and that can lead toward a kind of zealous thinking. It can lead toward a, toward a little bit of dogmatism. I have a video on extremism in sustainable living movements and how it's really important to push back against that in a way that's gentle and in a way that encourages people to embrace what they can and take those small incremental steps. We are not dogmatic in permaculture. And there is more than just food foresting to permaculture. So folks who say you can't have annual veggie beds, you can't have raised bed gardening in permaculture, that is completely incorrect. Bill Mollison had an annual veggie garden. Dave Holmgren has an annual veggie garden. Those are the co-founders of permaculture. It doesn't make any sense to say that you can only grow food in a polyculture food forest system. First of all, permaculture is site specific and culture specific. So we have to be culturally sensitive to the foods that people want to eat, enjoy eating, are part of their diet and their food culture. But also we have to look at the climate in which people are living. Not every climate is suited for a forest design. Not every landscape is appropriate to be growing trees and doing polyculture. We are taking the situation where folks are living, the conditions of the land that they are on, and we are designing appropriately. Oh, there's a turkey. There's a turkey trying to get my attention. About the sun. Yeah, the turkeys are really enjoying sunbathing today. That's an excited turkey noise. I think it sounds like a space laser, but okay. So where was I? So when we take the specific uh, criteria, the specific circumstances of a climate and we design for something that is culturally and climate appropriate, we are not going to always end up with a forest. Look at planet Earth. Is she covered in just forests? No. Is she covered in just jungle? No. There are grasslands, there are um, deep woodlands that are probably not very diverse that have huge old growth trees in them. There are tundras, there are tall grass prairies, short grass prairies, there are ocean sides, there are deserts. There are deserts that are comprised of cacti and those that are virtually devoid of them. We can have rocky deserts, sandy deserts, cold deserts. So when we're saying that what we are obligated to create is a food forest, we are neglecting basically everything in permaculture. We are neglecting all of the elements of permaculture that speak toward resilience, that encourage us to design with what we have following principles in nature to reach peak abundance and peak efficiency.
you cannot put a square peg into a round hole. And when you're saying that every landscape must be a food forest, and if somebody is growing an annual veggie plot, they are not doing permaculture, that is what you're doing. You're trying to shoehorn a design that doesn't work in every situation and is really, really limiting. Let's look at many of the staple crops that folks grow. Corn, barley, oats, rice, those are grasses. They want a sunny area. They want to grow in an in a grassland. They want to grow in an open field. They don't do well under the shade of trees. It doesn't make sense to say we can only grow food forests when so many of the staple crops that can be grown sustainably need to be grown in full sun. I'm going to show you around my annual veggie garden in a moment. It is in a portion of my garden. I have food forest in the front and in my food forest and in the food forest design that I have around the perimeter of my property in a U shape, I do grow some annuals. I tuck in those annuals. I find pumpkins work really well. They like to scramble up the tree and reach for the sun and produce quite a good yield for me, even in an area where I have a fairly closed canopy. But there are many other crops that just don't do well in those, in those circumstances. And it makes no sense to me when I am striving for abundance and diversity to limit myself by saying the only way that I can grow food is in a perennial food forest fruit guild or nut guild design. That doesn't work and it doesn't make sense. So many of the foods I enjoy that are appropriate to grow in my climate that feed and nourish my family are an important part of my diet. So many of the foods that I grow as treats or food for my poultry are crops that grow best in full sun. So if I have a sunny area of my landscape, why not take that sunny spot and exploit the positive characteristics that exist there and grow those annual veggies, those nightshades that love sun. Why not grow those cucurbits that do best when they have a nice hot area to grow? I am not gonna be successful growing watermelons in my food forest. In fact, it's very difficult to get watermelons to ripen here in the Pacific Northwest at all. Um, you should check out my video on growing cucurbits, by the way, and differentiating cucurbits. But those need a hot, sunny spot in my garden. I'm gonna take the hottest, sunniest spot in my garden and I'm not gonna put a tree there. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna save that for those plants that need that particular set of circumstances. My peppers, my watermelons, my cantaloupes, my tomatoes, my eggplants, and I'm gonna grow them in that spot. That way I am reducing my labor, I'm reducing my effort. I'm not trying to take that um, round hole of a sunny hot patch of my garden and shoehorn a square peg into it. I am working with the circumstances that are there to increase my diversity and increase my yield and reduce work. So let's take a little look around my annual veggie patch. Please note, I grow other annual veggies, remember, elsewhere in my garden, tucked in amongst things, particularly things like basil, particularly things like pumpkins. But this is the main area where I grow most of my annual veggies for our family of six. And it is a blazing hot place in the summer. It gets full sun, and that is how I want it. It is a set of kidney bean shaped raised beds, which are made to be raised beds with any scrap material I can find, urbanite, scotch bottles, um, logs I get off Craigslist free page. I use anything free that I can to create a raised bed and I grow my annual veggies in those beds. Guess what? I'm a real permaculturist, so let's go look at it. All right, so we're stepping out here from this arch where I have a blueberry growing underneath. There's a lilac here. And we're stepping out into a sunny portion of the garden. This is what's called a sun trap. This direction here, is north. This is south, this is east, and this is west. So here we have the sun coming in this way into the garden. And if I plant my tall trees and shrubs around the perimeter of the garden, I don't block the sun coming into the middle. It traps the sun. This is a permaculture design for where to locate your annual sun-loving crops. For me, it is also a part of my design where I have my rain garden. So as we move past the rain garden, we walk up to my annual veggie patch. You will notice perennial polyculture all the way around, all the way over here, panning over here quickly, all the way over here, perennial polyculture, food forest design, front yard, food forest design. Scrolling past my rows here. Surrounding all of this polyculture, 
is a diverse set of sun loving vegetable beds. Some things in here are perennial. I have perennial merit tree collards here that I have let go to flower, both to collect the seed pods and because the bees absolutely love those flowers. Because it is perennial, it is not going to die after it flowers. Buzzing with all kinds of bees. Oh, I see hoverflies in here as well. I also have perennial onions and things like that in here. Now you can see I've been working in the garden today and I wanna show you what I have planted, what kinds of things I grow in my annual veggie patch. This is not all underplanted in my food forest guilds. These are, for the most part, annual veggies. We don't have here the requirement to grow all of our annual veggies under our perennials under our large shrubs and trees. That doesn't even make any sense. So many of our annual food crops are sun loving. Many of them like rice and corn and oats and barley are grasses and want to grow in full sun anyway. They are not suited to a woodland uh, situation and neither are so many of our other annual crops. So when we're looking at our annual beds here, you notice how many of these crops are sun loving. I have my potato bed here again perennial tree collards behind, but my potatoes, I have all blue mixed in with a French fingerling here. These are sun loving nightshades. Over here, I have some rescue tomatoes from the dumpster, some rescue eggplants from the dumpster. Again, nightshades, sun loving. I have my Fissilis peruviana, Cape gooseberries planted out doing very well. I have cucumbers. All of these are sun loving plants. I have tromboncino squash in here. I have Aunt Molly's ground cherry here. Sun loving. It is a mistake to think that you have to grow your annual veggies underneath the shade of a perennial fruit tree or nut tree guild. That doesn't even make any sense. It's a strange fallacy that I've found folks fall into. So this bed has lots of things that are little, like my Fissilis Peruviana. There are rock dust minerals that I chucked on top here. I have some summer squash that have come up over here. These are some leeks that I need to get rid of. This bed, I have a backdrop here of perennial purple tree collars and my comfrey. Now, normally you'll look here. You can see my hat because it's really sunny. So if you look down here, you'll notice that there's nothing around the base of my tomatoes yet. That's because normally I would be cutting down my comfrey and using them for mulch. But the comfrey is late in flowering this year, like everything. And that means that it is really heavily visited by bees right now, especially bumblebees and especially hummingbirds today. So I have not cut it back yet, but in a few days I will be cutting back all of this comfrey and using it as mulch around my tomatoes and then it will come up again. It will bloom again. In this bed, I have some volunteers here. This is a volunteer American flag poppy. I planted these in my garden when we first moved in there, an annual poppy. I had them growing here 14 years ago. And clearly, the dormant seeds in the ground have found this is the year when they're gonna volunteer here, so that's interesting. At the base of this bed, I have all kinds of pumpkins. I grow pumpkins along the edge. I find they do very well grown in front of tomatoes and they will spill over the path. Sun loving, sun loving plants, y'all. We are not looking to grow these things in full shade. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So I hope you would consider in your permaculture design that you can grow your perennial polyculture. You can have those guilds stacked in with all of those annual and perennial plants, but you also can have space for your annual veggies. You can dedicate space to your watermelons, to your tomatoes, to your corn and oats and barley. You can grow those things in your veggie gardens in full sun and 
be practicing permaculture. In fact, you are practicing good permaculture. So thanks for watching today. I hope that you are encouraged that if you want to grow annuals in a permaculture system, that is totally appropriate. Please don't limit yourself and don't try to limit other folks to only growing a perennial polyculture in a food forest design. That is not all there is to permaculture. Much like you can keep a diversity of livestock, like sheep that like to be on open pasture and still be doing permaculture, you can grow crops that like to be in an open aspect and still be doing permaculture. There are many, many, many ways that we can use the 12 principles of permaculture design to work with the landscape that we have to increase biodiversity, increase yields, increase food security for everybody. There is no one right way to do permaculture except to say the right way to do permaculture is to use the 12 principles and design what is appropriate for your location and your needs and the needs of your community. So let's use those 12 permaculture principles and design appropriately. Don't limit yourself, don't hamper yourself. Permaculture should be about diversity and abundance. It should be about expanding the way you view the options we have for growing food, for feeding our families and feeding our communities in a way that increases our resilience as people and creates habitat for wildlife. So don't, don't hamper yourself, don't hem yourself in. Expand your opportunities. Embrace those areas that are appropriate for growing annual veggies. Embrace those areas that are appropriate to have grassland and pasture. Embrace those areas that should be food, forest, garden. Embrace all of the potential for your landscape. I will be back very soon, but right now I'm gonna go play with baby birdies that we have in a little turkey tractor here. And you can hear the ducks are starting to quack. We are um, gonna get a little quality time in with them before dinner, so I'm gonna go. Please check out my Patreon down below to support this channel. Thanks.